Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this um, uh, presentation, an executive overview of privacy laws, uh, which are very important in today's world because risk management has to do with cybersecurity and privacy. Now, Mitch and I run two cybersecurity companies and uh, offer various other cybersecurity and privacy support and products to companies, large and small. You can find lots more information about us on our website, on, on any of our companies. Uh, you ch check us out and see if, uh, see if you agree that we are qualified to present this information. This is a quick overview of what we'll be covering here today. Um, and we're going to get started right away with new rights for some people on Earth here. And this is going to be a non-technical report that's going to show the evolution of the process around the world. But it all gets down to risk management and company valuation. And in today's world, you've got to look at both cybersecurity and privacy for that. Um, why we did this, why we did this analysis, why we do these kind of analysis, we're combatants in the global cyber war. We've written a very thorough uh, position paper and report on the global cyber war and societal response to it. Sadly, uh, most countries' leaderships are not engaged in this cyber war yet, and we are being victimized heavily by authoritarian governments who are engaged in the cyber war. Of course, clients ask us about it, and this is part of what we have to do. We've got to help people understanding what's going on out there. Um, these are some of our position papers and reports that we have done. It's a wide range of them. Let's go to our website. So it'll be easy to find a full list and uh, help yourself to that information. Mitch, let's start off with um, what is going on globally out there with the fight and the pride of protection of privacy. So the first answer to that question is, it's very inconsistent, which is not great for, for either for companies that have to comply or for uh, folks that are concerned about the privacy of their information. So let's talk about two large uh, economic powers that have um, uh, made very different decisions. The European Union and the European Economic Area uh, implemented a privacy law called the General Data Protection regulation, which, by the way, exempts their government from uh, uh, anything that's involved in privacy. But what it does is it gives citizens in the EU and the EA uh, certain rights. Uh, we'll talk about them in a minute, but but uh, it is generally applicable, not, gee, if you're a financial provider, it's different than if you're a healthcare provider, and if you're something else, then it doesn't apply to you. The United States, on the other hand, has what's called sector specific privacy laws. So in the case of the United States, there is privacy laws that applies to children under 13, because clearly nobody between 13 and say 16 would use something like the internet, but the privacy laws are well behind. There's a different privacy law for healthcare. And by the way, that healthcare law doesn't apply to uh, health technology providers. There's a different privacy law that applies to financial services providers, doesn't apply to uh, fin fi fintech or financial technology providers. So it's, it's a bit of a mess. And then in the United States, we've started implementing uh, state individual privacy laws. So it, what we've got is a very young and immature and very complex. And as a company, if you have to comply with these laws, a very complicated compliance matrix. The blue here represents either regional or countrywide or regional or national data protection slash privacy laws. Uh, these, these countries have addressed the data protection in one way or another uh, at a national level. Now, we all know in China, you're not going to get much protection, privacy protection for yourself. We know that. But, you know, so why isn't the United States got something? Because it's because we don't have a national privacy law. We have some state privacy laws, sectoral coverage, as mentioned, um, but and then other countries there that are not blue, they don't have, they may have nothing, nothing at all down there about it. But you can see that a lot of the world is paying attention to this, paying attention, and, and so so are we. But so, the problem is that the devil is in the details. So 
even though you have 137 out of 194 countries that have some form of privacy protection, that doesn't mean they are equivalent and it doesn't mean that the data that you're concerned about is necessarily going to be protected. And remember, one of that 137 is China. And uh, they're certainly not caring too much about their folks' privacy. But let's let's take a look at the GDPR because th this bunch in Europe, they really are paying attention to this. So the General Data Protection Regulation uh, is kind of the first of what I generation privacy law. And what the GDPR does is it gives people certain rights. And that's, that's you know, uh, um, a, a really important distinction, right? Uh, the uh, Charter of Human Rights in the European Union says that privacy is a right. In the United States, there is no a privacy right. There's no right to privacy. It's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Bill of Rights. It's not in any of the amendments to the Constitution. There is no right to privacy. But in the European Union, the European Economic Area, there is a right to privacy. And the rights include things like a right to get a copy of the data that somebody has about you, a right to correct the data, a right to delete the data, things like that. And there are, there are more rights on top of that. But those are rights, and, and this they really, the GDPR and the European Union really led the way. Uh, now, if you talk to people, they'll say GDPR is not perfect, and I'll be the last one to say that GDPR is perfect. But these, these are evolutionary, and they really uh, started an evolution of second-generation privacy laws. Zero. Sometimes there's zero protection of rights. And you might want to think about this in the context of um, um, some non-authoritarian governments in the world are extending to their citizens a new set of rights, rights over their data. For an IT-centric world, these new rights can be very important rights. Some people believe that in the future we'll make our living from selling our data when and where we want to. But first, you have to own it. First, you have to have the right on it. Now, here's a map of what's going on in the United States right now. And you can see there's a lot going on in here. Mitch, you want to do an update here? This was as yeah. of June the 9th, right? I'm going to say, and this one, this one is completely out of date um, because it is such a fast-moving target, as Ray uh, pointed out. Texas for example, it shows that it's passed, it is now signed. Oregon shows that it's in committee, it is now passed and waiting for the governor's signature. So, um, you know, we're seeing we're seeing that. There are a couple of different models we're seeing. Uh, Delaware is, is now signed. Um, so there's a couple of different models, but but fundamentally, and uh, these things all are based on uh, what California did or what Connecticut did, it's slightly different. Um, uh, but uh, they give people rights and they give people who hold data obligations. So that's really the two aspects of all of these laws, rights and obligations. You, you'll also see that it seems to cover the political spectrum, right? Texas is, you know, has a, a slightly different political bent than, say, Oregon or California, yet Texas has a privacy law. You know, Tennessee is a different... A political bent than Virginia. Um, so we're seeing this across the political spectrum. Uh, and, and we shall see, you know, uh, in terms of federal law, maybe something will happen. I don't see anything happen before the next presidential election. So I don't see anything happening 23, 24. But uh, you never can tell. Congress occasionally surprises me. But will Texas be willing to give up its own rights down here that they have put together? to Washington, D.C., or will they hang on to that as a state's right issue? We don't know. We don't know. But you can see it's happening. This is happening uh, around the world one way or another in non-authoritarian governments. So let's let's talk about, before you move forward, let's uh, talk about uh, the battleground in the federal world. So the first battleground is preemption of state laws that Ray just mentioned, right? So if you look at the health law, called HIPAA. Uh, HIPAA is a floor to privacy. States are allowed under HIPAA to go off and have more restrictive, more secure 
uh, more comprehensive privacy laws. One of the things that the folks who are battling at the national level want the, the federal privacy law to be a ceiling. They want it to invalidate any laws that any states have passed. That's a huge, from a state's rights perspective, that's a huge ask to ask states. And as we have you know, over a dozen states that are have their own state laws, you're asking these states to say, yeah, whatever you guys are doing, it, it's irrelevant. Uh, just trust us. We're, we're in Washington. We know what's going on and we know what's best for you. And that doesn't sit well. The other is a private right of action, which means that a person uh, has the ability to go off and sue uh, a company if they misuse, abuse, or don't protect your data. Currently, California has the most robust private right of action. Uh, obviously, businesses who are the targets of getting sued would love for that private right of action to go away because they know that if you leave this up to the attorney general of the state uh, as the only person who could sue you if you did something, Odds of getting sued are almost zero. The attorney generals, uh, attorneys general, sorry, have a lot of things that they're responsible for. And unless you're doing something that is super egregious, the odds of you getting anything more than a slap on the back of your hand is almost zero. So those are the two things that are really stopping progress in federal privacy uh, legislation. Good points. California. California is leading the way in the states. We've talked about that already. You know that. Now, something to know is that there's something called the first generation and second generation privacy laws. Um, and so um, the in the second generation privacy laws, so Mitch, first of all, talk about the difference between the first and the second. And then here are some of the rights which Mitch has already been touching upon, but um, uh, but Mitch will explain this. So the the... First generation laws basically told businesses that they had some responsibilities to protect data uh, and there might be some fines or penalties, maybe uh, pretty lightweight for the most part, if you didn't comply with those those first generation laws. The second generation laws are the ones that give consumers rights. And that's really the distinction between first and second generation. Here's a list of some of the rights. They vary from state to state. We have some spreadsheets that talk about that. but but every state is different and that's a challenge for businesses um, in terms of how do we comply with all these different states because most businesses do not do business in one state. If you're the corner candy store or the corner uh, coffee shop, yeah, you probably deal in just one state. But if you're an online business, you don't know where your customers are coming from. And the, we'll talk about this in a minute. The laws are based on where your, your customers or visitors, not even customers, but visitors live. So if you're uh, any anyone reading this slide right here and listening to our words, you can be described as part of the first generation of cyborgs on Earth. Your brain right now is connected right through your computer, right into the central IT nervous sense, nervous um, system of all of humanity on Earth through the Internet. You, you you can't live without this information anymore. It's everything is around IT. IT centric is getting more and more so. Now, we have a situation, a battle going on right now where you are being given rights. You're getting rights. These words are about you. It's your right to correct your data, your right to have your data deleted. Okay, your right to stop someone from sharing that data. Do you want those rights? Is this an important as a challenge to you? Yeah. As, as we as we uh, talk about this, um, Facebook has released its its version of of Twitter, um, and you know, in the first couple of days of that being released, they added seventy million uh, signups to the application. Some people who are perhaps a a little bit skeptical of the universe said well the reason why meta facebook's parent company did this was because they wanted to be able to scrape all the data that you put in their twitter twitter clone you know they call it threads um and they want to be able to scrape that data at will and one of the things that you give up at least today uh under the united states law now it's interesting threads was not released and it's not available to people in the european union why? Because 
some of the privacy protections that people in the European Union have um, are at odds with what Meta wanted to do. For example, they tied Instagram to threads. Well, in the European Union, they say that's against, literally, that is against the law. You cannot do that. So the United States, is this is kind of a crawl, walk, run sort of thing. You know, they're trying to catch up slowly. Uh, you know, these rights will help you with um, the, um, uh, you know, getting some control over your data. But right now, it's still a bit of a wild west. And it really only, these laws apply to bigger companies, not to smaller companies. Okay, if you're a business and you've got customers in any one of those states up there that we just showed you, whether or not you're in that state or not, you've got to start responding to their privacy laws. I mean, that's it. So, okay, so what should your course of action be? Well, our recommend, follow California. Whatever California is saying, go there and you're covered, okay? And you go, so you got to have a, a, a privacy policy that's posted. You've got to disclose what you're using it for, disclose the classes and the names of the people who you're sharing the data with, methods. Um, you have to, you, you, you've got to do various and sundry things. Now, you know, if you don't have a privacy policy to post on your website, send us an email. We'll send you one written, a great one written by lawyers that we paid for. So you can get these things. And so you post your policy. That's one thing, right? But you got to do it because if you're going to have a problem, if you're going to have a breach or some sort of problem, well, you got to be able to prove that you actually did something about it. And that's where it gets tricky. That's where it gets tricky. Another one, Mitch, what word is this? It's a big word, lots of syllables. So extraterritoriality means, and this came from the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, that the law applies outside of the territory of the jurisdiction who is uh, writing the law. So uh, I was picking on Texas before, I'll continue to pick on them, not in any particular reason. Texas wrote a privacy law. It says that you know uh, we are based in Colorado, but if we have visitors, uh, or customers, which we do in Texas, uh, then we have to apply uh, Texas uh, laws, particularly when it comes to privacy and data protection, uh, because these laws assert extraterritoriality. Even though you're not in a particular state or even a particular country with GDPR, you still are required to comply with law. Enforcement. Okay, Mitch has already said not much going on, but there have been some fines um, and it's coming. Uh, it takes time. It takes time to marshal the enforcement resources uh, behind new laws and such broad, complicated new laws. It's difficult to get things organized, but it's coming. California just announced that they delayed the enforcement of their privacy law it was supposed to happen July the 1st of this year, but now it's uh, to March of next year when they're going to start enforcing it. But it's on the way. So okay. now so let's talk time. about California here. Hang on a second. Yeah. So, sure. so California actually has two laws, CCPA and CPRA. The, the uh, postponement of the enforcement of the law only applies to CPRA, does not apply to CCPA. That went into effect a couple of years ago. So CPRA, you know, we can talk a long time about what's going on in California, which we're not going to do. CPRA was really a uh, a, a uh, uh, amping up of the protections that were already available in CCPA. So, so don't think you're out of the boat. And in fact, Rob Bonta, the attorney general in California, has already done some of these fines and has sent out nasty letters to hundreds of companies saying, uh, you're not complying with the law and you have two choices either comply with the law or we're going to go after you so we have we have um you see that cybersecurity and privacy now are being merged into one conversation because it's about protecting data and that is the way things are going um and we our, our report our written report on this uh, goes into much more detail. We were hoping actually make this video shorter than we made it, but you can see there's a lot to it. 
and uh, the report has more information and we can answer you any of your questions and we can help you privacy is part of your risk management program because a risk management program includes both cybersecurity and privacy in today and we can help you get there if you have any questions if you have any um uh, uh questions or any requests for any additional information please don't hesitate to reach out mitch any final comments um we also have some matrices of data that we've uh, collected from a variety of law firms so if that's uh, helpful for you, you can ask us for a copy of that. Uh, but this is this is a moving target. It will continue to move for a long time. Um, what we are seeing is though the velocity is way higher, way faster than anything that uh, we expected. Thank you. Turnkey Cybersecurity and Privacy Solutions offers the complete cybersecurity program for small to medium-sized businesses. They include everything needed to secure your business and meet compliance requirements. Visit our website at turnkeycybersecurityandprivacysolutions.com to learn more.